Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. So today we are going to talk about flow measurements in the fluid flows. So before I move on to that lecture, I would like to ask you, let us say you have this tap at your house and when you open the tap, water starts flowing out of it, right? And now if I ask you to measure the flow rate of this particular fluid, of the water that is coming out, how do you measure the flow rate? Tell me. Pause the video, think about it and find out the answer. How do you measure the flow rate of the water flowing through this tap? Now firstly, I hope you are aware about what is flow rate, right? You know what is flow rate. Let me explain you. Flow rate basically is nothing but the, just a minute, let me take the pen tool. So flow rate basically is nothing but the amount of fluid crossing any section per second. Amount of fluid crossing any of the section of the pipe per second. It also means that amount of water coming out of this tap in every second. Now, when I say amount, amount can be measured in two jargons. It could be either in mass, that is kg, or it could be either in volume, that is liters or meter cube. So, if you measure the amount of water in mass coming out every second, that is known as mass flow rate, which is measured in kg per second. And if you measure this in terms of volume, this is known as volume flow rate, that is meter cube per second or other liters per second, right? Now my question is, can, now, can you now find out the flow rate of this particular water coming out of this pipe? Flow rate means you have to either find out the volume of the water coming out of this pipe or tap every second. Okay, let me tell you the answer, how do you do that? What do you do? Take a bottle of a non-volume, let us say the bottle is 1 liter. Bottle is 1 liter volume, right? Now when you place bottle uh, and take a stopwatch in another hand. So take a stopwatch in one hand, bottle in one hand. Now put the bottle which is empty entirely in, uh, under the tap and start the stopwatch. And stop the stopwatch when the bottle is completely filled with water. Now which means what? Let us say for example, for filling up the bottle completely, the time taken was around 10 seconds. What does it mean? It means that one liter of water has came out of this tap in 10 seconds and you are interested in finding out how much water is coming out in one second. So if one liter came out in 10 seconds, how much came out in one second? That is 1 divided by the 10, that is 0 0.1. So you can say that flow rate is volume by time which is 1 liter by 10 second which is 0 0.1 liters per second. So this is around 100 ml. So every second 100 ml of water is coming out. Yes. Now this is an experimental uh, way of measuring the flow rate. Now tell me, what if you, I ask you to find out flow rate of the fluid flowing through any of this pipe. So what you see over here is the process industry. And in almost all the process industries, we are aware that the waters are, or any fluids are transferred from one place to another place with the help of pipe networks. And there are many such fluids flowing from one place to other place. And as an engineer, you have to make sure that a particular amount of fluid is flowing through a particular pipe at a particular flow rate. Now, when do you want to make sure that a, at a particular fluid is flowing through a certain flow rate, you must be measuring the flow rate flowing through the pipe, right? So, how do you measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing through the pipe? Because always you cannot have the access to the outlet of the pipe where you can keep the vessel and find out the uh, flow rate, right? Let's say the pipe is going into the boiler or condenser. You cannot have that access to put the vessel, right? So, how do you measure the flow rate? There are devices available, right? So, we have seen the devices called venturi meter, which can use to measure the flow rate of the water or any fluid flowing through the closed pipe. You can also use orifice meter to measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing through the closed pipe. You can also use rotometer to measure the flow rate. So, these are the devices to use to measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing through the closed pipe. Now, let me show you another example. Let me show you two images. One is of the canal, another is of this kind of water, large water bodies. If I ask you, how can you measure the water for flowing through these big large water bodies like canals and rivers? Can you put up a vessel at the outlet of 5 liter or 1 liter? You cannot do that, right? How will you measure? Tell me. Or how would people anyway measure? Because you might have seen there are a lot of dams being constructed over a river. Dams are built to create reservoir where the water is stored and then this water can be used 
particularly in Indian context, water has to be used for irrigation purpose through the distributed, distributed channels of canals, right? Network of canals. Now, in canals, you as an engineer have to make sure that particular amount of flow rate of water is flowing. My question is, how do you measure that flow rate? Ki how much water is crossing through this canal at a given point of section in one second? How much water is flowing through this canal? How do you measure? The answer is notches and weirs. So, these are the two things with the help of which you can measure the flow rate of the water flowing through the open water bodies like canals and rivers. Let me show you the pictures of this, what are those and we will see how the flow rate is being measured. So, notch, if you see notch, you can see over here, this is a V notch kind of thing, right? And weir is like this. So, what you see over here, what is constructed over here, masonry structure, a concrete structure is weir. So, you might have seen this kind of images nearby your villages or nearby your residential areas or places where people have used this kind of sections. Now, these are not main, meant for, you know, constructing or rather restricting the area of the flow. These are meant to calculate the flow rate of the water flowing through this particular uh, bodies, right? So, what is notch? A notch is a small opening in the side of a tank or a small channel in such a way that the liquid surface in the tank or channel is below the top edge of the opening. So, for example, if you look at this channel, notch, so whatever you see here is the notch. See, uh, this is a tank, the side of the tank is this kind of notch is there, you can see. This is kind of a plate, a metallic plate kind of thing and all the water is flowing through this plate and it is flowing up to certain height from the corner point, right? Now, looking at the height, you can measure the flow rate. What is weir? A weir is a concrete or masonry structure placed in the open channel over, the, over which the flow occurs. So, this is a concrete structure. You can see concrete structure. The structure is like this and then over it, the water is flowing up to a certain height, right? It is generally in form of vertical wall with a sharp edge at the top, at the top running all, all the way across the open channel, clear? So, this is the kind of weir. So, there is not much difference, only difference is in the size and the way it is being constructed. Then you can say, a notch is a device used to measure the flow rate of the liquid through the small channels or a tank. So, when you have a small channel or tank, notch can be used to measure the flow rate. And when you have a big water bodies, so a weir is used to measure the flow rate of the flow through open bodies like river and canals, right? So, now a notch is of relatively smaller size. If you compare this and this, the size of notch is little, little smaller and weir is of relatively bigger size, right? Because it measures the flow rate of the big water bodies. A notch is generally made up of metallic plate, which you can see over here. And weir is generally made up of concrete or masonry structure, right? Okay. Now, let us look at different types of notches and weir which are available as on date to measure the flow rates. So, depending on the shape of the notch or weir, the, the types are classified as rectangular notch or weir, which means that the sectional view, the, whenever the water body is flowing, you create a restriction for all the water to flow through a particular channel or section. So, section is rectangular. So, if you can see section from front view, it looks like this. And the height from where water is flowing is this height. And depending on the value of this height, you can measure the flow rate. More water is flowing, the height will be larger. If less water is flowing, the height will be smaller. So, we will see in another subsequent lectures that how is my flow rate related to the height. And then the length of this channel, so you can see this is a rectangular section. So, this, therefore, this is called rectangular notch or weir. Now, let me talk about the another type of notch called triangular. Now, when I say triangular, or many others, it is also known as V notch. The shape of the notch is of V shape or triangular shape, you can see. So, water is flowing through certain height and it, water body makes a shape of a triangle. Therefore, it is called triangular notch and it has an angle of theta, right? This is when you look it from this side, and side. Now, another type of notch is trapezoidal, where you can see that the sectional section is like trapez trapezium. When I say trapezium, it means when you see it from the front, you will see like this, a slant height, this, this. So, if you look at the shape of the water across the section, this is of trapezium shape. Therefore, this is called trapezoidal notch or weir. So, in all the subsequent lectures, we are going to look at one by one. If I have a rectangular notch, how do I measure the flow rate? If I have a triangular notch, how do I measure the flow rate? And finally, if I have the trapezoidal notch, how do I measure the flow rate? So, we are going to see all of them one by one. So, for this lecture, thank you so much for being with us. For more such conceptual videos, you can log into our website clariconcepts.com. Thank you.